Welcome to our morning show on WRCO Radio. We are talking about Greater Richland Area Cancer Elimination. It's our, our day to talk about that today. And in the studio with us, all uh, the volunteers. We have President uh, Eileen Stevens and Alan Kaszubski is here. June Nee as well, talking about the upcoming Grace which is not too far away. Alan, you had a really successful walk. Let's start by recapping that today. Good morning, Phil, and thanks thanks again for having us on. Um, yeah, it was it was great. You know, it seems like forever ago already. Um, but yeah, um, on May 18th, we had the first ever Race for Grace, and the weather cooperated, uh, which was awesome, and we had a great turnout, so that was it was wonderful. It was. Um, I thought, yeah, you just get a home run there. Uh, did anything surprise you about it? There were lots of surprises. <laughs> <laughs> that it went, that some, it worked. Some good, some bad. Um, you know, there was a lot of learning, too, but I think the biggest surprise for me was to see all the smiling faces, you know, um, I, I wanted people to have fun, but to actually witness it and see so many people interacting, talking with each other, cheering each other on, it was it was great. It was a lot of fun. And the area of fire departments that were represented, that was pretty moving, wasn't it? It was, it was. And I'll, I'll tell you uh, just a short story, which is, which is hard for me to do because uh, I like long stories. But um, right be, it was that morning... And one of the um, captains of the Richland Center Fire Department uh, found me and asked if he could talk with me about the race and in private. And I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> we already went through a couple surprises that morning. I'm like, all right, now, now what curveball am I getting, right? And he said that the captains talked and they were all in agreement. And they said they really wanted to cross the finish line together as one big team. And I thought that was really cool. And he was concerned that I wasn't going to be okay with it and wanted that competition between the teams. And it was, it was really cool. And I'm like, yep, I'm all for it. Um, and to, and to witness it and watch them all, you know, wait for each other. Um, you know, there's some that were faster than others, which was fine, but for them all to come across the line at the same time was, was really cool. Yeah. That was really moving when they, they just kind of marched across together. Yep. Yeah, it was. And the other fun part, Alan, I thought were the, the kids. They they really kind of got it off to a good start, didn't they? They did. And boy, I think I think everyone thrived off all their energy too, which was really cool. But just, you know, talk about happy faces there, you know, seeing so many adults cheering on the, the young kids that did the race was really cool. And even one of their firefighters, you know, giving the kids a high five as they're getting near the finish line. Um, you know, people were just getting into it, which which was awesome. So I know this wasn't the goal, but is it a little bit of a fundraiser for Grace? <clears throat> it, it was, and and I do have, you know, I've got some numbers, and it was one of the goals, Phil. And, you know, when, when I came up with this idea, I really wanted something to combine um, fundraising and prevention. And, and what I didn't realize, you know, because – the past year, in that past year and a half when I was involved with Grace, it was all on raising funds, right? And yes, we, we do some social media stuff for prevention and helping people out and, you know, passing out sunscreen and that, but that was never like my real focus at any one point in time. And, and to do this race, even at the beginning of the planning, I wanted both to be involved, but prevention still wasn't my main focus. But as time went along and, you know, the day of, it became the primary focus. And, you know, the fact that we didn't lose money was just an added bonus. It was great. Um, so we ended up raising, you know, netting just over $3,000, which was really cool. Um, and that's, you know, and I'll get into the why in a little bit. But, you know, going back to that prevention side, um, I just, I just want to briefly just put out a big thank you um, to two of our board members, um, Sherry Scott and Leif Carlson. Sherry's our um, head of prevention on the board, and, you know, she's, she's the rock there when it comes to prevention for Grace. She does all the hard work of finding all the good information to share with people. Um, she's our direction setter for prevention. And... And then Leaf, you know, coming up with the walk around the world with Grace, um, which has been so cool and getting so many more people excited about being active. And the combination of those two, if it wasn't for them 
we never would have had the race for grace. I never would have had the idea. Um, so, you know, kudos to them and for, for their so much dedication and passion for helping prevent cancer, which uh, led to this um, event. So that was, that was really cool. Uh, so thank you to both, both Leaf and to Sherry. But um, getting back to the race, and I thought it was really neat, you know, with Grace, every time I've been involved with Grace, there's always these little, these I call little miracles that happen. And there were so many times where um, either someone was really active already that they were going to push themselves for something further to do to get more active, or more what I saw was a lot of people that weren't very active that decided to because of the race. And that was really cool. Whether it was firefighters that were training together as a group with their heavy gear on um, for many days getting ready for the race, or whether it was someone that wasn't even walking before that started walking. You know, there were people that were in the one mile that were just walking. That was a big deal for them. And I know there were people in the one mile that struggled to finish, um, but they did. And and some people did the 5K and maybe never have done that distance before or were training so they could finish. And so that was really cool. It was. We have some results. Should I mention them? Yeah, please. All right. Well, let's see here. The uh, 20 to 29-year-old category, Gavin Birch was uh, the first place finisher. Eric Patro in the 30 to 39. And uh, Terry Thielman in the 40 to 49. Tommy Franklin, the 50 to 59. And Bruce Raisler in the 60 to 69. That was the men's 10K. And we want to emphasize that Terry Thielman was the overall winner. His time, 45 30 Point nine, So he did very well. Yeah, he was cruising. He was cruising along. Uh, for the men's 5K in the 0-19, to 19, Ethan Brown came in first. Ashton Sumwalt was first in the 20-29. to 29. Evan O'Connell in the 30-39. to 39. Thurman Brown in the 40-49-year-old to 49 year old age group. Darren Fruit in the 50-59. to 59. And Jay McGlynn in the 60-69. to 69. Gary Hanold in the 70-79-year-olds. to 79 year olds. Ashton Sumwalt uh, was the overall winner with a time of 24 even. So congratulations to Ashton. Uh, now for the women in the uh, 10K, Ava Cosgrove. First place in the 0 to 19, Heidi Esser in the 20 to 29, Maria Gilbert in the 30 to 39, Melanie Harper in the 40 to 49, Pamela Tiedrich in the 50 to 59, and Marsha Carlson in the 60 to 69 year category. And Marsha was the top finisher too with a time of 54 35 7. Yes, and that was really impressive. Yeah, congratulations to Marsha. And in the 5K for the women, Haley McGlynn, first in the 0 to 19. Brooklyn Freestone, 20 to 29. Savannah Tidrick in the 30 to 39 year olds. Bianca Rubio in the 40 to 49. Sean Cockroft in the 50 to 59. In the 60 to 69 year age category. Joy Lineweber and Mary Nee in the 70 to 79 year old age category. The overall winner was Haley McGlynn with a time of 25 46 2. So. Yeah, very impressive, and some good names, and I think good area names, but some people that you drew in from outside the area, too. Yeah, in fact, um, I believe our winner for the 5K, I think, was actually from Madison. Okay. The overall winner. So. Relatives to the area, I think, yeah. uh, the Sumwaltz, yeah, yeah. right. So, so that was really, oh, and just FYI, if you have not gotten your medal yet, um, we do have the medals available for the first, second, and third place um, finishers at the Grace Office. And the Grace Office hours are Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 to 1, and they're located above Royal Bank in Richland Center. So there's a couple people, I think, that maybe haven't gotten their medals yet. Um, so if you'd like to get those yet, we'll have them available for a couple weeks yet. So I'm guessing you're already making plans to make it bigger and better next year then. Well, you know... Definitely. We're definitely doing it again next year. And we did have some recap meetings to, you know, talk about lessons learned. What could we do better? What do we want to keep doing? You know, I think we've already got the t-shirt color for next year. So that's a big start. And we definitely have the date and we're going to stick with the same time frame. So it'll be the Saturday after Mother's Day, which I believe is May 17th next year. Uh, but it's also the same um, weekend as Morel Mushroom Festival, so you can remember it that way as well. June Nee is here, the walk chair. June, uh, you guys had your, your opening night and everything. How did, how did the pancake supper go? Good morning, Phil. 
we had a really successful kickoff in May. We had we served approximately 110 people, and our donations uh, exceeded our expenses, so that was a nice uh, just bonus. But we had great team registration turnout that night. I believe we had around 30 teams register, so that was amazing. Um, it just went really well, and I want to just say thank you again to all all those who made that night successful from um, a lot of my committee members and board members um, and family members helping to set up and clean up and everything. It just really um, turned out well. And of course, um, the Kiwanis Club of Richland Center for the wonderful supper. So we want to thank them as well. It just was a great night. You've had uh, some other things come and pass. Uh, you had uh, the T-shirt orders had to be in not too long ago, right? Yes, um, that is passed. Um, you are still able to register a team, but it it is past the date to order shirts for your team. Um, that was uh, the begin or the middle of June here, so that is passed. Um, but we'd still, if you're interested in registering a team, that still um, can happen. You just won't have a shirt. Um, but we always order a little extra, and we have shirts from the past that we will have there. So you can al- always buy a gray shirt for that year. And some parades have come and gone. You, the, the group was recently in the Rodeo Dairy Days Parade. Yes. Um, yeah, Colleen MacArthur has been wonderful um, as our... Uh, parade uh, coordinator and she reported the other night that she we had a successful Muscaday and June Dairy Day parade um, turnout. Um, she was a little worried about those but it ended up just having people show up and a few people rode on the the um, cart whatever they had. So yeah it sounds like those were both successful. Uh, our next parade is going to be the 4th of July parade in Lone Rock. So we're looking for volunteers um, to help with that, hand out sunscreen. Um, I think we do pamphlets and some candy, uh, whatever is allowed at the parade. So we're looking for volunteers. That um, lineup is at 1030. Um, I am not sure at this time uh, where. Um, and that's 11 o'clock parade time. So if you're interested at all in volunteering and helping out with that, we'd love to see you. Um, and then our next one up, uh, uh, is Casanova Community Celebration on Sunday, July 21st. And that parade, I believe, starts around 11 a.m. Okay, so people can volunteer there as well? And, yes. Yeah. So what's the next order of business? I know and as far as walk chair, you're kind of getting all your ducks in a row. And uh, what's kind of the next big event you're planning? For? Yes, well, um, right now there's uh, a lot of fundraisers going on. And we're just getting ready for the walk. Uh, we will have on Wednesday night, August 7th, um, we will have our Captain's Survivor's Night. Um, and that's going to be the evening where our teams turn in their packets and luminaries and raffle tickets. Um, that's the night you want to do that if you want them to count towards your team total. Uh, that will take place at the Phoenix Center. Um, we'll start off around 5.30 with a pizza dinner, free will offering pizza dinner with some veggies on the side. Um, and then we'll get going with our program around 6 p.m. And we usually hear from someone from UW Carbone and someone from Gunderson. So hopefully we have both of them in attendance as well this year. And um, we always uh, encourage our survivors to come and sign up, join us that night. Um, team, we'd love to have you just come and support us that night, stay for to hear the doctors. It's always an amazing talk that they give kind of updating what they're doing with the funds that grace gives them i'm always impressed by that because they they kind of talk at our level a little bit so we can understand it yeah they they do yeah and it's just always mind-blowing and and it's just so good because our community can see how our dollars that we have raised are being used and that they are being used for um towards research and they do a really good job of kind of explaining exactly what they're working on and what it's being used for your survivors for this year's walk they had uh, kind of their first uh, night with grace uh, during your opening night didn't they yeah the ambassadors yes um, we introduced our ambassadors on kickoff um, and then they have been participating in some of the parades as well so it's really nice for them to get out there and um, and 
see their names, people can see who they are. And so unfortunately we had one um, of our ambassadors drop out, uh, but we're going with the three that we have and uh, we're really excited and honored to have them be our ambassadors for this year. Now is the time to start thinking about uh, a luminary. And uh, you and I have talked about that before. Uh, there were years where there were lots of them for like a certain person. And then that kind of drops off. And maybe you don't hear those names right anymore. So if somebody's listening, uh, maybe they haven't made a luminary for a loved one for a while. It's It'd be a good time to do it again, wouldn't it? Yes, I love the luminaries. That's one of my favorite things to do. Since I'm walk chair, I don't always get the chance that I used to just walk around and around the the luminaries and look at all of them. Um, but that's just one of my favorite things is to look at how creative um, people are and the names. And you do see a name and you think, oh, I forgot about that person had cancer. And so, yeah, if you'd like to make a luminary, they are out at some of the local businesses. And they're, um, you can grab a bag and you decorate it in memory of or in honor of your loved one, a friend. Um, and then you put, uh, it's $5 per bag. And you just put that right in the bag with your form that it comes with. And if we are having Ben Kelsch from Nova Video is going to record the luminaries again for us this year. And so if you would like your luminary to be on the video, please turn them in by Survivor Captain's Night on Wednesday, August 7th. And then they will be on the video. It's always fun. I know you've done it with your daycare kids in the past, but uh, kids and grandkids, it, it can be kind of a, a family fun thing to put those together. Yeah, yeah. We buy, um, I buy a bunch of stickers, and I'm not very artistic myself. So, but a lot of my children in the daycare are very good artists. So I'll buy stickers and get them fancy markers and stuff and. I just bring the bags down and and then I just add the names to them. And I think it's pretty special because um, it's made with love for sure. Indeed. We look forward to reading those again uh, coming up uh, at, at Grace on the 9th of August, right? Yes. Yep. At, Friday night, August 9th. At Crosca Park. So it's yes. uh, the traditional walk and, and everything will be the same. Yes. Everything is going to be the same. We're excited. Um, I'm really hoping that there's no weather situations like last year. Um, but we'll deal with it like we always have. Um, and so, yeah, we're really looking forward to uh, the walk this year. I think we have a fighting chance because I think everything's going to be dry by August the way it is, the way we're getting all the rain right now. So I think we'll be good. Eileen Stevens, uh, who's the president. Eileen, what's new? Good morning. So, yeah, one of the things I wanted to talk about today was some of the statistics because people are always asking, you know, numbers served and where where are they from? And, of course, we've expanded our townships, so any township that touches Richland County, we now serve. Um, but when you look at the, the numbers served in each county, we kind of have a rough, you know, rough uh, idea of where they're from. So when you're looking at Crawford County, we have served at least 15 people in Crawford County. Grant County, 69. Iowa County, 13. Richland County, 553 and Sauk County 36. So as we're getting more active in those areas, you know, we look for some of those numbers in some of the, the uh, surrounding townships outside of Richland County to increase as we get the word out there and participate in some of those community events. And of course, now numbers of people served, like individuals, there's a little over 700 people, but they could have been served from one to four different years. Because, as you know, 58% of the funds go back to the community members. And if in the first year, they can request 2750 uh, If they need a second year of support, it's 2250 A third year of support is 1750 And a fourth year is $500. So some collected once, some three times, and you know, some have even collected four times, depending on what their individual needs are. Some of the towns represented, again, uh, you and I talked before on the air, but sometimes that's deceptive because somebody could live in Sextonville and have a Lone Rock address or a Richland Center or whatever. Right, yeah. So when you look at the numbers of the different cities, you're, you're right. That can be kind of fluid because different different communities, you know, one might say Boaz, but Boaz could be Richland Center, it could be Muscaday. So when you get into the specific towns, it might not be a true number because it to, you know, I'm from Boaz, but my mailing address might be Rich and Center. So depending what they put down when they applied, um, 
you know, so yeah, we, we've served several communities, you know, when you look at, you know, Boaz, Richland Center, Casanova, Gaze Mills, Hillsboro, Hills Point, Lafarge, Laval, Lime Ridge, Lone Rock, Muscaday, Sextonville, Soldiers Grove, Spring Green, Viola, Yuba. Um, so we've hit several towns or, you know, addresses, and we just want to keep continuing to spread that word. I also looked at, people were, had asked about, just just curious as to male and female, how, who we have served. And when I was looking at those numbers, we have served 395 females and 312 males. The ages range from three years old to um, 92 years old, with the average age, just doing the average of all of them coming out to about 64 years of age. Um, so it's, uh, you know, a lot of people we have served, and like June mentioned, the, the research aspect of it, 25%. We give to uh, split between Carbone and Gunderson for the research. And like she said, they do a tremendous job at presenting it in layman's terms, which is just, it, it gives you goosebumps when you're there to listen to it. The, the sad thing is, uh, in all these years of grace, there's probably not been a time when you weren't, you know, giving money to some patient. I mean, I think it's been a constant thing over the years, hasn't it? It, it is. I mean, every month we are, the board is approving um, you know, funds to be paid. Yeah. So we don't, it's all kept confidential. The board does not know the names. There's only a, a couple people who know who the names are. So that's one of the, the um, great things about the program is we don't know who, who we are serving. We know they're vetted through the, the committee, um, but we don't know unless they tell us. Mm -hmm. You know, if they would mention it to us. It's sad, but it's also a, a positive that you can kind of be that helping hand, right? Right. Right. Yep. To give that a little bit of a hand up. And it's, you know, it, it's sometimes hard to ask for the money, but, you know, just taking that cell phone bill off your plate when you're struggling mm -hmm. can be helpful. Or maybe they need a hotel. Their appointments at, you know, have to be at the hospital at 6 a.m. on a winter day, you know, that that would help them get a hotel the night before and just kind of take those little stresses off that can make a huge difference. So uh, right now you're kind of getting in the mode for auction. Uh, has, how's the response been uh, for people wanting to donate? Uh, the response has been great. I've been logging the donations in. So far we've had 72 items donated. There's more up there at the office that I've not recorded, anything that's come in since Friday. And, you know, and then we'll decide the auction committee, you know, including yourself, we'll go through it and see what we'll be using for the, the various venues, whether it's bucket raffle, silent auction, or radio auction. So we are, you know, still looking for some big items for radio auction that would, you know, bring a big bang to the income. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some things that, uh, you know, maybe the more practical things go well on the radio and, and mm -hmm. some things maybe are better to be seen you know, right. in person and, and look at it and maybe make a bid on it at the silent auction too. Right, right. Yeah, and that, that'll be something the auction committee will look at to determine what's going to go best where. Um, and, you know, some people have had specific requests, which we will, you know, look at those, but, you know, bottom line is the auction committee will determine you know, where stuff will be going. It all goes to the same all, pot, doesn't yeah, that's it? That's <laughs> right. That's right. It all comes back to grace. So that's that's what's important. And you want the most bang for your buck too, you know? So. Right. And I think that's what most people look at is how can they generate the, the most money? They aren't looking at, look what I did, look what I raised, look what I donated. Um, the, the spirit is, it's grace. It's all for grace. And that time is coming up. That's kind of scary, too. Uh, do, you, do you have a deadline that you'd like to have for auction items to be turned in? And things yes, like that? we would like to have auction items in by July 10th. That way we can make sure they get recognized for their items. We're going to try, Alan will work on getting some of, you know, on Facebook, um, getting them on, I don't know if it goes on the website or if it's just, yeah, the website and Facebook. I have to look at Alan for that answer um, to get to where everything's going to be. So as they come in, I'm taking pictures and, and getting them, you know, because at the end, we're probably going to get a lot and then we'll, you know, need a lot of help getting pictures mm -hmm. <laughs> and get things logged. So the sooner we people can get them in, we would really, really appreciate that. And the silent auction items, again, will be in the community center uh, during the Grace Night that night then? Right. For the for the night of the walk, the silent auction and bucket raffle will be inside mm -hmm. the community center. Yeah. That's always so. a fun atmosphere there, too. Mm -hmm. so. It sure is. Well, sure is. Uh, June is a special month in terms of uh, something to, to celebrate and recognize, and uh, we'll talk about that when the morning show continues. We're uh, speaking today about Greater Richland Area Cancer Elimination. Uh, 
uh, June Nee and Eileen Stevens. We have some late breaking news, June. Uh, when, when is the T-shirt day going to be this year? Yes, thanks, Phil. I forgot to mention that before. Um, I just want to remind everybody that um, T-shirt pickup day is July 30th, and Marsha will be up at the office from 10 in the morning till 7 at night. Uh, so teams can come on up and grab their team T-shirts. And um, we want to encourage people to start wearing them right away and get get Grace out there. You know, wear your shirts, wear past shirts, and um, get Grace out there. It's kind of a advertising for us. And also then, you know, the week of the walk, we always encourage everybody to, you know, as a community, let's all wear our gray shirts, you know, a couple of those days to to get the word out there. So uh, just wanted to, to mention that real quick. What does the shirt look like this year? Are you aware of the color? Yes, it is uh, like a Tennessee orange. Okay. Yeah, it kind of, uh, a theme, you know, is making strides for a cure. Um, it kind of went along with Race for Grace, and those shirts were orange. Um, my One of my favorite colors is orange, and maybe I'll add a little splash of blue to that. Mm. Um, but, yeah. Let's not get political here. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing up football teams. <laughs> um, I didn't say anything. Um, I, anyways. Go. What, what's that? Go Pack Go. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, so uh, the colors are going to be uh, like a Tennessee orange. I think it'll be a really nice orange and for the walk. Alan, you wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some other stats that you have that we're going to kind of break down a little bit today. Yeah, Phil, um, just some quick um, stats for the recap with the Race for Grace. Um, we had a total of 203 people registered, which was completely awesome. My goal was to... You know, my really wish was for 200, and we exceeded that, so that was great. Of those, 39 were firefighters um, from five different firefighting teams, and our farthest team was from Hickston, so that was that was really cool. I had to look that up on the map, too, when I, when yeah, I heard that. Yeah, just out by Black River Falls. Yeah. <clears throat> wow, Hickston, where is that? <laughs> so yep. that's awesome that you drew them from that far away. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was very special. Um, but none of that would have... You know, it wouldn't have worked at all without our, we had about 20 volunteers that helped, you know, before and also the day of um, the race, which was really cool. Uh, we already talked about the money. We, we raised over $3,000, which was great. Um, we had, you know, none of this would have been possible without the businesses that supported us along the way. And we had over 30 businesses um, supporting the race. So thank you to all those. And I have to, I I would hate to forget this, but, um, you know, my my sup main support has been my wife, Terry, and she's very special to me. Um, and you all should be giving her a big thanks for putting up with me talking about this event for the last nine months. So um, <laughs> kudos to Terry. Thank you. Um, so also for Grace, you know, I, I work on the publicity side as well. And Colleen MacArthur is has volunteered, you know, huge thanks to her to be our parade coordinator this year. And it's a lot of work, you know, it's a lot of work getting a group of people together and and Grace struggles at this like many other organ nonprofit organizations do. We need volunteers. And June talked about some of the dates already, but we also have more parades that we'd want to get into later on this year. Um we want to be in the Viola Horse and Colt Show. We have not been in that parade in many, many years. I don't know if Grace has been in it before, but not since I've been involved. So that's, you know, September 21st. We'd love to have some help for that. But also the Canyon of Lights Parade. So Colleen's really excited about that parade. If you're an artsy person or a crafty person, you like to build things, she's looking for help and she has some ideas, but she's looking for assistance and you know, Grace has the butterfly, and if we had a really cool big butterfly that lit up, I think that would be so awesome, but we can't do it without people. So we really need people, and you might be wondering, well, how do I let Colleen know, right? Go to walkwithgrace.com. You can go down there, scroll down to the bottom. There's an info section. Fill out the form. Say, hey, you want to help Colleen? You want to help with parade or help with anything else? We need assistance from people from all kinds of different things we have a wonderful board we have wonderful support already but we need more people to keep doing the great things that we do you can also call our phone number which is 
604-825-8255. And, um, we'll, and say how you want to help out. Or you can go to walkwithgrace.com. So one of the things that we also do is each month we have like a different theme cancer related. And this month happens to be, um, you know, in June, it happens to be Cancer Survivors Month. And, you know, I'm used to getting posts for, you know, prevention, how to help yourself, you know, but this was like totally different. I'm like, what are we going to do for that? Right. But, you know, Sherry came through again and gave me some wonderful posts and a common theme with all those posts, um, the information that she was finding is how it impacted people and, you know, still continues to impact people, even though they're past the treatment point, you know, they're in that survivor mode. And, you know, I would like to hear from one of our own very special people here today, just kind of, you know, how has it impacted you, June? How is it, you know, how is your life different now compared to before you were diagnosed with cancer or isn't it? Oh yeah, it's different. Um, Yeah. When I got that, uh, I didn't really think about cancer too much. Uh, I don't really remember it being in my family a lot. Um, So when I got that cancer diagnosis of um, papillary thyroid cancer. Um, at the time when I knew nothing about it, you know, you're, it's scary to hear those words um, come back as positive. Um, and it's definitely changed my life. Um, I think more about what I do and what I eat and how I take care of myself. Now, you know, that may not always prevent it, but I'm doing the best I can to give myself a, you know, a good edge. I think that uh, every year um, the survivors at Grace get the little butterfly with the, the number of years survived and, and you are happy to continue on and add years every yes. year. So what's it going to be this year? It'll be 19 years since I was diagnosed in 2005. Yeah. Yes. Good for you. So yeah, it, it does change your life. but and, and I think we've talked about it before. Some of the, the motivation... For, for you to work hard on Grace is that we actually did go to Grace for some gas cards and things. Yes. Yeah. And I'm one of those people that kept saying, no, we don't need it. I'm okay. But then, you know, when you get in that and you realize um, I can't work uh, like I was, um, and then all of a sudden you get two energy bills or two phone bills behind, and then you realize, okay, um, I could just use a little bit of help. And just that little bit of help um, for us just made a huge difference. Um, and it really it really helped and it just took a lot of stress off. So I didn't have to worry about where are we gonna come up with this money for our energy bill. Um, and that was what really helped us. And so I am just forever and, you know, just forever grateful to this organization, which I've been a part of even before I was diagnosed with cancer, but it just really made me want to do more for this organization because I have firsthand, um, received the help and, and, uh, yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah. We were really fortunate too, you know, and I, and I can speak as a, a spouse, um, you know, it was interesting, you know, the, the community that we live in and not only grace, but you know, we had three little kids at home at the time. And I don't think we had to do, we had to have to make a meal for about two weeks because people just kept bringing food to us, didn't they? Well, this community is amazing. I just would not want to live anywhere else. This community is absolutely the best. Uh, when, when one of our neighbors or someone in our community needs help, we're just, people are there. Uh, people are there for each other. And I just think this is just the best community anywhere. Indeed. That's a good statement for Grace. Eileen, um, you know, you, you're just, you're the, you're the new president, but certainly you knew about Grace, you know, even when you, you weren't back in this area too, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Back when Grace first started, I was aware of it. And, and uh, I know our, the family had a lot of participation and then like you said, it did kind of fade out. Um, and then now we're, we're coming back again. And I believe this time we'll stay strong through the whole thing. Um, you know, for years to come. Your family obviously was touched by cancer as well. It has been. Yes, right? many, many times over. Yes. Yeah. So, and that's another motivation for you too. Mm-hmm. Right. 
Right. To Definitely. stay strong for them and, and yep. raise funds for the community. Yes. You have some stats that you wanted to share with us as so, well? Well, I was just, uh, I had mentioned that we're working on getting our flyers into um, uh, uh, accessible to the Spanish speaking community okay. and the Hmong. So we have worked, I've worked to get that, that taken care of. I have got somebody that's going to review them to make sure the translation is where it should be. And then, because we want to be prepared for the, the chamber that has Heritage Days coming up. I, I want to say September. And so we wanted to have the paperwork or the, the flyers, the trifold flyers available in different languages. And talking with the city, it sounded like Spanish and Hmong were the top two. And so I got them translated to that. And now it's just getting the fine tunes to to get it taken care of. But it's very important to reach every member of the community, isn't it? Yes, it definitely is. And and we're hoping at Heritage Days that we reach you know do a great outreach there when we have the the information available. I have been talking with one of the community members who is Hispanic, looking she will be coming to our board meeting and meeting the board and and possibly be interested in filling a position there, which would be great. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's, it's everybody's just doing their part. It's been a phenomenal. I mean, you look at the extra steps you know June takes and Alan takes just to make this, and the others, you know, to make this so successful. So, but if someone has some some input, maybe some questions and things, what is the best way to contact you, Eileen? Right. Yep. The best way to contact is uh, Alan had mentioned them already. You go to walkwithgrace.com, and then there's an info. You go info at walkwithgrace.com. Or just call 608-604-8255, and uh, we'd be happy to, to help you or, you know, answer your questions. If there's ideas they have for outreach or, or how we can be better, we are all open, all ears. And get those auction items rounded up. Get those uh, you... auction items rounded up, you betcha. Get those in to us. And then the other thing I'd want to mention is a calendar raffle. If teams or anybody has calendar raffle tickets that they're they're not selling at the rate they thought they would or they thought their team would be more actively selling, we are out of tickets at the office. So if anybody comes up to the office for tickets, we don't have any. So we'd really want people either sell them or if you don't think you're going to sell what you have, turn them back in early. We'd hate to have them all turned in walk night because that's lost revenue when we've got teams wanting more tickets, but we don't have them in the office to give them. Mm -hmm. So get get those sold, uh, or if not, bring them forward then. You bet. Words. Get them sold or, or bring them back sooner rather than later so we can get them out there again. And and that raffle drawing is held then, uh, you do one the Night of Grace, don't the, you? On the Night of Grace, there will be two drawings that night, both for $1,000 each, and then the rest of it, you know, it's on the calendar the 9th through the 31st, uh, there will be drawings every, each day. Mm -hmm. so. And we do those here at the building. You do them right here at the building, yes. Alan, anything that you'd like to add here? Uh, just once again, Phil, thank you uh, to WRCO, WRCE for supporting us. And also thank you, Phil, for helping out on the race uh, for Grace uh, and being uh, providing the music and doing the MC. I thought that was a nice touch. Um, several people commented to me about um, how nice that was to have, so I really appreciate that. Great. It was no problem. It was a very uh, festive atmosphere, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. It was. It was a lot of fun. Indeed. All right. Well, again, uh, the important date's coming up. The uh, deadline for the uh, auction items, I'd like to have it be July 10th, and June, the uh, t-shirt day is July 30th, you said, right? Yes. And the walk itself is coming up on August 9th. Uh, so we appreciate you guys coming in here today. Thank you, Thank Phil. You, Phil. Walk, Thanks, Phil. Walk with Grace here on WRCO's morning show. Eileen Stevens, Alan Kaczupski, and June Nee on WRCO.